Okay, so today we are looking at the PolyN synth, continuing our synth engine journey, and we're going to be looking at physical modeling, which is a type of engine where you take a cider, take a resonator, you whack them together, or you bow them, or you blow into them to get some really cool sounds. So there's quite a lot with this one, and just the idea of physical modeling, there's a few different settings to think about when you create your resonator or you create your exciter, but really we're going to go through every single setting on this machine, just so you have an understanding of how it all works together, and some little tips along the way, but really so you can get the most out of this machine, as well as a few demos so you can get an idea of what the sound's gonna sound like so in the end let's stop talking about it. let's get straight into it all right we are here with the poly and synth and today we are going to be talking about physical modeling with the PMD so this is all about the idea of like sound design you usually have an exciter and a resonator or something that makes a sound and something you hit it with to actually get the sound effect so that's taking it into the digital world using the poly and synth but i will start by saying this one is quite chunky so you only get two sounds with this one if you're sort of spraying out the sound so just keep that in mind but it does offer a lot for sound design itself and just fitting in there so what you gotta really understand is that you're doing a bit of mental gymnastics it's not engines and filters we're dealing with exciters and resonators so we'll bounce around these menus a little bit but we'll go through each of the settings and just have a bit of a discussion. So in the Exciter menu, we'll start with that. As you can see, we have three different ways we can excite the audio. So strike, like I did before, where you like hit something. Air is blowing into something, so like a saxophone or something like that. And then you've got bow, like a violin that you play across. So they're all trying to mimic those different sounds. And this first row, that's all the volume. So we've gone strike. If I turn that down and bring up the air, we have our air sound and then we have our bow sound. And then for each one of those, we have a timbre option that we can sort of sculpt how that sound is. So if I just play with this one, as you can hear, there's sort of like a range in there and they'll start splitting up. So there's a bunch of different timbre options that you can mess with within the full spectrum it's not just like from zero to 100 there's a few different elements in there so you just gotta test out with the different sounds but we do have some custom settings for the strike and the air so we'll start with strike which is mallet and this is how the hit is going to sound there's a bunch of different ways the hit happens so if we just scroll through this one So as you can hear, there's a bunch of different ways that the hits are happening. So like up to here, it's like sort of a double hit as well as like a small like rattler hit, like um, a bunch of straw hitting. Um, but yeah, you've got to adjust there and listen to what's happening and sort of pick out those little nuances in there. Same with air. So if I just turn that one down, bring this one back up. So we have that. So there is a bunch of different ways those are going to affect how the sound comes up, but you can mix two of them together. So don't feel like you can only do a strike or an air. You could do both of them together, whatever instrument that crazy could be. But you can really start exploring with the sound and being able to pull something out of this machine. So in the second menu, we have like a few options for how that sound moves around. So we have a glide option. So if I just turn this up a little bit, we can have it slide around and then we can use that to create our sound effects from that. But really that is the exciter part. So that's about the exciter, but all this stuff is mixed together and brought into the resonator. So we're doing all that stuff and now we're going to make our sound. So there's a few different parts of this that kind of have the right wording, but just needs a little bit more explanation but really this is about shaping the tone. So form and position. So form is more like what the substance is. So if I bring that right down. So it's like sort of the acoustic pitch of the thing. Position is sort of like where you whack it along. So. So 
So there's a bunch of different stuff in there and then that is allowed to change the sound. So like, I'll stick with these two. So dampening is like, uh, if an object is more metallic, it's gonna ring out a lot more compared to like a brick, which is gonna be a thud. So you have more like a rock sort of style or wood. And then if you keep turning up, it's gonna turn more into like a metal thing that will ring out. We'll just turn that back down. And brightness is sort of another tone shift which allows you to adjust how dull it is or how like sparkly or bright the sound is gonna be. So with those four options, you can really start adjusting how that sound's gonna come out. But then we have a few other parts to this as well. So space does some cool things with the stereo spectrum, so bouncing the sound around. So as you can hear, we're getting a much wider sound. And then array is a way that we sort of got a filter on our hand. So this allows us to sculpt the sounds. So it acts more like a low pass filter. So if you have it fully open, it's like fully opening the sound, but then we can sculpt out some of those high sounds by bringing in the array as well. So they're not really named for the things they are, but they all interwork with each other to create the sound that you want. So just think of the material that you're trying to strike and just think about how it would all fall into that sort of stuff. But I do just tend to go in there and start tweaking until I get a really cool sound out of it. And like with all the other synthesizers, we do have a way that we can tune the sound. So, and then we can also fine tune it as well. And we don't have a second menu in there. There's a lot of stuff going on in these two menus, but just between the exciter and the resonator, that's how we use this one to create some really cool sounds. So alongside the other synthesizers, we do have some LFOs and envelopes but then we don't have too many so we have a envelope for the exciter so that sort of ties into some of the little bits in here on how the sound is going to come out like how long we're going to hit for or how long we're going to bow for so we can use that to adjust how the sound is coming out and you just got to play with how all those different elements are going to work with it like the bow the sustain usually kicks in a lot more so being able to bow and have like a really hard strum using the attack and the decay so you could do something like that uh, it's going to give you that little bit of a kick to boost the sound and it'll drop back down the strike that's going to do a little bit something different so it's just understanding how those are going to come out and we do have an auxiliary envelope that we can use with our modulation matrix which this really does like, but we also do have an LFO too. We only get one. And if you've been following along, like I go through each one just to explain what's going on, but we have our sync option. So if you want to deal with Hertz per second, or you want to actually sync it to the tempo of our machine, you can do it this way, or yeah, you can go by frequency. And because it is physical modeling, I tend to use Hertz more just because of the nature of the instrument makes it feel a little bit more organic than is like rigidly linked to the tempo. Uh, we do have a bunch of different waveforms that we can use as well as a sample and hold. So this links to the rate and then it will change its frequency. Sort of like this, but in just different levels along the rate as well. And our re-trigger, so I usually leave it free running because of that organic feel. But we do have notes, so when we hit the note on here, it's gonna reset and go from the start of the cycle as well as a one shot. And with this machine, because we don't have that many envelopes to work with, if you're trying to get in a sneaky third one, you can set it to one shot and then that will play one cycle. So we'll just pick one like the ramp down. So this mimics our like little AD envelope, but we'll do one cycle and then that's it. And lastly, we do have a mod matrix. We only have three modulation sources, but really we only have those two modulations, the auxiliary envelope and the LFO. So you can play around with these to create different sounds, but you can have a variety of all the areas that we covered across that machine so you can set up a lot of routing to like really augment how this sound is playing maybe it goes between a strike and a blow in a really slow lfo and then that becomes a new way of playing the instrument as you play through the song as well so we do have a lot that we can work with here but it is a bit limited it's really just focused on the 
exciter and the resonator and another area that's going to help you out especially if you're live playing this thing i've just got it set up as so everything will work on one of the synths so we do have these knobs here which allow us to add macros so if we're live playing and our invisible hands are covering something we can use these to sort of tweak the sound as we're going so to do that one we need to come into the clicky knob menu and then we scroll down to macros and then in here we can see all the elements and i will say this one really does love uh, velocity sensitivity as well as aftertouch so you do have access to those ones and aftertouch is when you push the note down and you can press having that link to the bow strum as well as the air you can get a very expressive machine out of here so to edit one what you need to do is go in here make sure you come in here and give it a good name so it's going to bring up the keypad that name is what pops up there so you're telling the person how this patch is going to work or when you come back to it you can do that but as you can see there's a variety of different settings already set up but if we want to adjust one we can just click our encoder go to where the number is so like say if i want to change the strike level i just go touch that knob and that's going to put it up there for you and we do have five for each for all these different parts so feel free to experiment and you're going to get a lot out of this machine just by being able to tweak a few different settings and that's really it for the pmd it is a very interesting physical modeling synth and it does offer a lot of sonic capability i find i use this more to sample sounds and create some really interesting textures in the background but instead of talking about let's have a demo of some of those sounds on here So I hope that's given you a little bit of inspiration to look at the physical modeling synthesizer on the Polyen synth. It does add a lot of really cool textures, especially if you're doing like bells or glockenspiels or all that sort of stuff. It does add a lot, but it is one of those chunkier synths, like it does use up a lot of CPU and you do only get two polyphony with that one. But when you're doing things, you can work with those constraints to get something that's really cool out of there. Like for me, arpeggiators and having like the reverb and delay, you can get a lot out of this machine. And one thing I really enjoy doing with this is using it to create a sample and then I can bring that into one of my other Polyend devices or onto the computer. So it's a really good texture sound design element that you can bring into it so i hope you did enjoy this one and if you did definitely give it that thumbs up because it does tell the algorithm the point this to other people people that got the poly and synth and probably looking at learning some of these engines and if you do have any comments or queries please feel free to leave them down below i do try and go down there and answer as much as i can about this and being like a body of resource for anyone that's looking at physical modeling so if you did enjoy this one and you're looking at the other engines as well i do have a few more videos on the poly and synth on this channel so if you're looking for them i look forward to seeing you next time